classical derivation of Planck's radiation formula. It is widely believed that Planck has laid the foundations of quantum mechanics as a new scientific field, with his paper on density of thermal radiation, where he has postulated for the first time what became to be known as the elementary quantum of energy epsilon equal to h times ne. Quantum mechanics is believed to have solved apparent difficulties, which some new experimental findings, including the black body radiation, met, when attempts were made to be explained by what is perceived as classical physics. However, not only is the so-called classical physics not to blame for the failures. For instance, Rayleigh and Jeans were unable to explain correctly the black body radiation falling into ultraviolet catastrophe because of their own error in analysis. But Planck himself has incorrectly understood the physical meaning of the main quantity U he uses in his paper. This misunderstanding of the nature of quantity U has proved crucial and has led him astray into the need to resort to non-physical postulates which has thrown the 20th century physics into a dead end. So, let us now focus our attention on the founding paper by Planck and observe its crucial part concerning the meaning of the so much important quantity U. We can see that Planck has explicitly stated that, quote, if amplitude and phase both remained absolutely constant, which means completely homogeneous vibrations, no entropy could exist, and the vibration energy would have to be completely converted into work, unquote. In other words, even if entropy is zero, the energy of the resonator is not only non-zero, but it can be completely converted into work. However, the quantity U does become zero when entropy becomes zero. Therefore, quantity U cannot be the energy which the oscillator possesses, but can only be the exchanging energy which the oscillator shares with the other oscillators. Planck incorrectly considers the quantity U to be the energy of the oscillator. That is, according to Planck, U is the entire energy the oscillator possesses. Quantity U, however, is only the energy the oscillator exchanges with other oscillators. Here is why. In the discussed founding paper. Planck derives the following relation between entropy S and the quantity denoted by U where epsilon is an energy element, elementary quantum of energy, and k is the Boltzmann constant. However, it is immediately evident from the above that entropy S tends to zero when the quantity U tends to zero. Also, from We can formally write the result from the integration as shown. Which is also physically correct because entropy tends to zero when the quantity U approaches zero, as Planck himself has explained explicitly in his paper. Therefore, the quantity U cannot be the mean energy of a resonator as Planck has suggested. In other words, in absence of fluctuations, that is, when entropy S is zero, the quantity U is also zero. Quantity U will not be zero only when there are fluctuations, that is, when entropy S is not equal to zero. Thus, the quantity U derived by Planck must be the mean exchange energy. That is, energy which resonators exchange, not which resonators possess. From the above, the logic which has escaped Planck is this. Quantity U, 
whose meaning we need to understand, is not zero only when entropy s is not zero. Entropy s is not zero only when there are fluctuations in the energy content of the oscillator, that is, when the amplitude and the phase of the oscillator change randomly. Therefore, quantity u is not the mean energy of the oscillator, but is the average value of its energy fluctuations. Mean fluctuation energy is the mean energy which the oscillator exchanges with other oscillators. In thermodynamics, exchange energy is called heat. Therefore, the quantity U in Planck's study is mean exchange energy of the oscillator and that is nothing else but mean exchange heat. Q bar. Once again, because the goal of Planck's exercise is to derive a correct formula for the energy of the heat emission. It is obvious that such formula cannot have anything to do with the non-emitted energy of the resonator itself, as Planck has wrongly accepted, but must be the fluctuating energy of exchange between resonators, which is nothing other than heat. Also, the average energy fluctuations, Q bar, cannot be equal to the entire mean energy of the resonator epsilon bar. The resonator does not give off its entire energy which may only happen as an exception when exchanging it with other resonators. Classical thermodynamics unlike statistical thermodynamics never confuses the energy of the system denoted here by U and italics, on the one hand, with heat Q and work A, which the system exchanges with other systems with the environment, on the other. When treating thermodynamic processes, energy of the system and exchanging energy of the system have always had a distinct meaning in the first law of thermodynamics. Confusing the energy of the system, denoted here by italic U, with heat Q and work A, which the system exchanges with other systems will be of no importance if the system were exchanging all of its energy thus leaving the remainder of the energy epsilon sub minus to be zero this is not the case however even according to boltzmann's distribution at no point of time are all molecules possessing zero energy although it is true that a given molecule constantly exchanges heat with other molecules there is always a constant average energy epsilon bar take one oscillator isolated by an adiabatic sheath from its surroundings. Such isolated oscillator will keep its energy epsilon sub 1 constant in time. Remove the insulation while having the oscillator and an equilibrium system of oscillators not shown in the illustration. Now the energy of our oscillator will start changing in time with equal probability in positive and negative direction ideally random around the mean value epsilon bar. Thus, under natural conditions the oscillator at a given moment will have energy epsilon sub plus or epsilon sub minus. Therefore, there are three distinct quantities that have to be recognized separately. First, energy mean energy of the oscillator epsilon bar, which is equal to epsilon sub 1. Second, freely exchanging, dispersing, radiating also transforming fluctuational energy of the oscillator delta epsilon which is shared with the other oscillators entirely randomly third non-dispersing non-radiating residual energy of the oscillator epsilon sub minus no matter what there will always be a constant value of the exchanging energy heat written here as the absolute value of delta epsilon bar equal to q bar which will be proportional to the mean energy epsilon bar after this introduction we will now present a classical derivation of the law known as Planck's radiation law for this reason we need to know the expression for the mean energy epsilon bar of a harmonic oscillator and the expression for the average exchange energy, q bar. Thus, 
Let us observe a simple linear oscillator described by the shown equation. The expression for the average energy of a single oscillator is as shown, from which it is obvious that even if the various individual oscillators have one and the same frequency knee, they may have different amplitudes. A. We will take this expression of epsilon bar for granted, not to interrupt the flow of this discussion. Derivation showing that the expression for the energy of a simple harmonic oscillator is as used here. And that simple harmonic oscillators of a given frequency Ni can have different energies depending on their amplitude A is shown elsewhere. Further, the expression for the average exchange energy heat denoted by the absolute value of delta epsilon bar which a given oscillator of frequency Ni exchanges with the other oscillators is found by using the so-called index of dispersion. The index of dispersion gives the connection between the mean value, say, epsilon bar in our case, and the variance delta epsilon squared bar. Around this mean value epsilon bar, the index of dispersion is the quotient of the variance delta epsilon squared bar over the mean value epsilon bar, which for Poisson distribution is unity. This index of dispersion is typical for situations such as Brownian motion and is also applicable in cases as the one studied here. Thus, the root mean square RMS of the fluctuation will be as shown. So, now we know what the expression for the average energy of one individual oscillator is. And, even more importantly, we now know what the expression for the average exchange energy heat that is the absolute value of delta epsilon bar of each individual oscillator is of course the above derivation shows the way it would be done using contemporary approach without considering that newton's second law f equals m times a is limited in its description of motion that law is a law of rest, not of motion. Discussion of this point is deferred to another presentation. Without a doubt, however, even when Newton's second law is modified to describe motion, by becoming F equals M times A plus MV squared over 2X, the mean exchange energy heat between oscillators will again lead to the same expression for the absolute value of delta epsilon bar, although with a different constant. Absolute value of delta epsilon bar equals C sub 2 times Ni. Now, observe. N oscillators having frequency Ni and average energy epsilon bar. The amplitudes of the oscillators differ. These N oscillators consist of two fractions. One is N sub plus. That is, the fraction to which all the oscillators with energy above the average energy epsilon bar belong. The other fraction is N sub minus, which consists of those oscillators that have energy below the mean energy epsilon bar. Those N sub plus have become such because energy heat has been transferred to them. The average value of that transferred heat is C sub 1 times Ni. But that is per oscillator. Therefore, for all N sub plus of these oscillators the average heat transferred will be N sub plus times C sub 1 times Ni.
Now, this average transferred heat M sub plus times C sub 1 times Ni could not have come from anywhere else but from those number of oscillators N sub minus shown here in blue deficient in energy because they are the ones that have transferred that energy and thus have lost it to those red N sub plus above. So, now we know how many oscillators have lost energy. N sub minus, which is equal to N minus N sub plus. And we know the amount of the energy these N sub minus have lost, namely, N sub plus, times C sub 1, times N. And therefore we can immediately determine how much of this total amount N sub plus times C sub 1 times Ni has been lost by one single oscillator. See expression shown at the bottom. But this is exactly the average exchanged energy heat Q bar of one single oscillator. From Boltzmann's law applied to energy, the number n sub plus of oscillators having energy greater by c sub 1 times ni than the average energy epsilon bar is as shown. Thus, we get the following after repulsing n sub plus. From all said so far, it follows that the classical expression for the density of the energy radiated by a blackbody must be modified so that the average energy of the linear harmonic oscillator be replaced by the mean fluctuational energy mean heat derived above. Thus, the correct expression for the distribution of energy in the spectrum of the blackbody becomes as seen. The expression for the distribution of energy in the spectrum of the black body was derived purely classically, without the need to resort to artificial postulates and workarounds. Also, no quote, quantum hypotheses had to be postulated, because in classical physics, heat exchange is already taking place as quanta. The value of constant C sub 1 in this classically derived formula is found empirically in exactly the same way Planck established the value of the so-called Planck constant H considering studies such as those of Lummer and Pringsheim. The derivation above shows that classical mechanics is sufficient to account for the black body radiation law and no so-called quantum hypothesis is needed. In other words, the perceived need for unusual developments, such as quantum mechanics, to explain phenomena, such as black body radiation, in reality, is superfluous. A better grasp of classical physics should occur first, before resorting to fantastic proposals.